pronounce it. And we're live. Okay. <laughs> we're trying to, to find out how we pronounce the, um, the name, the name of, the of the wine. wine because I picked a Spanish wine, which is, wasn't very smart. <laughs> um, and it's lovers, Mallorca. not um, bullfighters, or not fighters, what it's saying, Toreadores. But okay. it's, I don't actually think it's how you Tempranillo. <laughs> Tempranillo. Espana. Espana? Rioja. Rioja. Okay. <laughs> Let me just double check that we've got sound because, you know, what we're like with technology. It's, um, <laughs> you think we'd be a little bit better. Do you think so? It's better. We really Kim's need. Um, here. Yeah, we need to Kim here. Kim's not here at the moment, but that's okay. We've got this. Yep, man in the fort. Here we go. Okay. Let me see if I've got sound. It's, you know. Oh, yeah, we go. Technology. There we go. Cool. So I'm today drinking a uh, Rioja. 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 Beautiful. Um, Hale speaks uh, Spanish, so that's why she's probably a lot better at this <laughs> than what I am. Um, and it's a red wine. So yes, and it, that's the label. If you, I don't know if you can see it, but um, I'll put the details in the description. And cool. I, um, I recommended it from the time I did used to drink red wine. <laughs> And I remember it just no, being just really one. like don't do it. Just like, have it, just have a um, sip. Just being like really silky smooth and like really soft mm. and lovely to drink. So and warm. It smells yeah. good. So that's how I remember it. So ah. I think you might like it. I, I hope you like it anyway. I don't. Oh, we're having an issue. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> and we also wanted to talk about this yes. beautiful candle that we have. See if here. I can pick it up. So. This is from the beautiful Fiona from Natural Raw, and it is delicious. It smells it's Making amazing. us feel all sorts of things in the office, but it is made from 100% pure essential oil. It has hemp wick and soy wax. Mm. Yeah, so it is beautiful. It's um, really relaxing, isn't it? That really smell. good. Yeah, really yeah. good. Love so, it. yeah, if you need a candle or I think she's doing creams and stuff, but I'm not sure if she's got any yet. But if you need a candle, um, go to Natural Raw Essence on Facebook. And that's N A T U R A W essence. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Thank so. you, Fiona. Thanks, mm -hmm. Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. So, <laughs> we welcome to our wine time. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, so, our topic was today was entrepreneurs means intrapreneur. Um, and this is something close to our hearts. You like it? Mm hmm. <laughs> See, I told you. Uh, it's something this close to our heart because obviously um, we have little side hustles um, that we work on here and quite a lot of people in the team, as we spoke about like quite a few times, they have side hustles. Mm -hmm. So um, Kim also, um, how long ago, I suppose about a month ago, did a talk about... Like a training. Yeah. yeah we do different trainings um, every Thursday in the office too, which is cool. Yeah. So, yeah. And that was really valuable. And yeah. it gave us a real good insight into the difference for him, for when he was an entrepreneur and then went to um, being his, you know, an entrepreneur and having his own company full time. So it was very interesting for us to see the kind of pros and cons between the two. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to have a little chat about that so. yeah yeah cool yeah. basically yeah that's basically it um we were thinking we don't normally outline what we're going to chat about like yeah Hales is still nervous for some reason I'm not nervous anymore about <laughs> getting on <laughs> Hales is like what are we going to talk about it's like just let it flow yeah um have a little chat yeah so we're just gonna have a chat I mean this is just our personal experiences when in no way no way experts but we're just talking from where we are at the moment with because we both got our own businesses um what we value out of each business, pros and co um, out of each side, um, pros and cons, yeah. and um, having a long term term vision as opposed to having just a now vision um, and short more well, short term vision. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and a big part of that I think that's really valuable in having a longer term vision is thinking about kind of looking at goals. So mm -hmm. a lot of times we kind of have an idea, but we don't have a clear path forward, and that can obviously change a lot. But one of the things that a lot of us don't do is write down goals and in the longer term rather than the short term so whether you're an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur whether you have a side hustle your own business it's it's really important to be clear about your um about where you want to be long term and when mm -hmm. i say long term i'm talking about 10 years because we we always want things and results right immediately yeah like, exactly I completely understand yeah like, of course we do, you know, we want to be as, have our own successful company, like, right now, or why yeah. can't, you know, why can't we? But understanding the values of 
Um, when you're working for a company, the, the exposure you have to things, the training, the security of that, the money, the yeah. network of people that you're going to meet. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously if it's a company that you share the same values, that's also really important because it may be that actually you don't ever use that side hustle and make it into your own full business where you're doing that full time. Mm -hmm. But it might be something where you can collaborate and work together with the company that you're currently working for. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly right. I'm just going to shout out to Nur. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. Hello. <laughs> Thanks <Hi>. for watching. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. So, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it's a very touchy, I feel like it's a very touchy subject though because people... I don't know, they interpret it differently. Like, you know, entrepreneur versus entrepreneur and people have different um, opinions yeah, and very strong opinions about either side because a lot of the time the arguing opposition to an entrepreneur is when you're an entrepreneur, you have no other option but to make it work, which means that you work harder. So I'm just saying that from what I've sort of been hearing and reading and watching, um, when you sort of put all your eggs in one basket, it's like it has to work and you don't have that... Safety, safety net. Safety net, yeah. yeah. So then you're not just sort of, you know, coasting through it. You're just really pushing hard mm. um, because you've got nothing else to sort of fall back on. Yeah. Um, but then in saying that too, versing that, it's when you do have that safety net as an entrepreneur, you can work, I mean, in those first couple of years or those first couple of months or whatever, how, however long it takes you to get to full-time working for yourself, um, it, it might take you a bit longer. Like as mm. in work hours, you might have to go home and work on that side hustle but you're still putting in the same amount of work really um yeah and i guess totally. it comes down to what you do with your time as well you know if you're working nine to five and then you're going home and you're working on your side hustle say five to ten or five to twelve or five to two a.m whatever it is um that time that you're using and that time that you're putting towards the business whether or not you're using it effectively mm. determines how quick you get there too. So yeah. there's all variables in it. There's, it's such a huge, yeah, it's a huge, huge topic. And um, one of the things that like that, that really stood out for me, I was reading um, a magazine called The Collective Hub. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of that, but I'd really highly recommend it. The way they describe it, because I'm not the best at sometimes describing things, but they describe it, um, The Collective Hub covers business design, technology, social change, fashion, travel, food, film and art. So it's it's... <coughs> There's a lot of stuff about um, new starting businesses, like new starters, um, and um, how a company has grown and the goals that they may put in place. And one of the articles that they wrote was about um, Lululemon. Mm. And what they do, and what I love, I love yeah, yeah, I really, really love this, is as soon as you go into Lululemon, as soon as you start working, on day one, they ask you, and there was these two questions, let me just... Something that they ask you is, um, what do you want in life and how can I help you get there? Mm. And it's like, it's they're sitting down, they really, really know, want to know what your true passion is, where you want to be mm -hmm. in the long-term game and how they can help you to get there. So they actually have like a vision and a training or a goals Strategy, and yeah. training program where yeah. they like they sit down and everyone gets given like a, a coach mm -hmm. um, who sits down with them and says okay what are your goals how can we as lululemon help you achieve those goals yeah. and then kind of put in strategies to help that person to get there so say for example um someone's to come in and say look i want to be a ceo of my own company one day so they'll see how Obviously, they still need to work at Lululemon and like integrate into that part of the team and provide value to mm. them. But at the same time, they get them to um, shadow the CEO, for example, mm -hmm. or they get them to do kind of project management tasks that gives them a glimpse into the inside world and the finance and everything like so that. So, like something of a that's CEO. in that, yeah, yeah, in that area, yeah. And because maybe if you experience something, you may not even. You may change your mind. You know, yeah. you might do something. You have this idea that you, you want to really be like a CEO. It. Yeah, and then you're like, no, I don't want to do that. No, no. <laughs> exactly. No, that's yeah. too much. You know, because <laughs> we have this grand idea of like mm. the the really sexy side of of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. and and actually it may mean that giving someone a taster of that isn't well, may puts them in a different direction. Yeah, or maybe yeah. it gives them more drive. Either way, something that Lululemon does is has this vision and, and um, goal training program where 
they believe that goal setting is really important so not only are they helping people achieve or realise their dreams, but you're also getting people who are really motivated and driven in the workplace. In the workplace, yeah. And can turn around and say really good things about Lululemon because yeah. they turn around and say, they helped me get to, yeah, get to where I want that to be. Goal. Yeah. Or if, if nothing else, they've helped by giving me those experiences to get to where I am right now, yeah. you know? Yeah, and so. the quality of people working there would increase as well, only mm. because... I mean, just uh, this is just from my personal experience, but working on something that you're passionate about after work makes you more passionate at work, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I don't know, you come into the office and you've got more um, more drive to be here. And uh, I don't know, like, because you're breaking away from what you're doing during the day, you're working on your own thing at night, it gives you more ambition, like you're happier. I'm not sure if that's the same for you, but yeah. that's the same, that's, that's for me. Yeah. Um, I come to work and I'm refreshed and, you know, I mean, what I do at work and what I do at home is pretty much the same thing. I just do it for myself versus doing it for your social voice. Um, but, yeah, I, I, to me, that's, um, yeah, that's, i am just lost my train of thought. No, but you're right because yeah. that gives you that extra purpose. Yeah, it's so extra like, purpose, it's, that's right. You have that purpose. If you're, if you're with a company anyway that you're aligned yeah. to in their values, then you're going to feel like that that is fulfilling part of your purpose but you may also have something else that you're passionate about you're not yeah. always just passionate about one thing and mm-hmm. wanting to achieve like one area it's really good to know that you've got yeah you go home and you've got something else to get excited about your yeah. own little thing to be working on it isn't for everyone but um for those that that have that you know that drive and that they want that then yeah. that's that's awesome that's awesome yeah, yeah. exactly yeah each their own basically um this is like i said we're not in any way experts this is just coming from our experience we're just having a chat um if you guys have got opinions about it definitely post it in the comments and if you've got any questions chuck them up now because um when we end it obviously we can't answer them (laughs) um another thing that um hi to fiona by the way fiona's watching (laughs) (laughs) the candle smells delicious it does (laughs) i know you literally want to eat it i said i wanted to bathe in it earlier i was like it smells so nice and i just it's so soothing you know you can literally bathe in it because it's essential oils right Oh yeah, so yeah. Add it to your bath, or I don't know. So if that's Fiona, correct, well, but. yeah, with essential oils, you can probably you put to a little bath. bit in the Can bath I bathe or... in that wax? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. No. <laughs> um, so uh, another thing is um, is when you do have goals. One thing that I remember when I first started looking at goals a couple of years ago, because I just didn't even realize, realize or hadn't been exposed to goal setting, which sounds crazy, but it's not something that you really learn that much in school? Did you do that in school or uni? Like no, goal setting? Not at all. No. Like, um, with school, I think it was when we were younger. I don't, I don't know if this happened at your school, but I remember when I was in like primary school and um, shout, you know, put in the comments if it happened to you, but in primary school, they used to say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you know, it was the same question that your mum and dad asked you, like, what do you want to be? And you always had these like exuberant, things that you wanted to achieve or become like astronaut firefighter you know all those (laughs) things um and i feel like that was only the real goal goal type stuff you Mm. would do in school like yeah and it was always so earlier on and then when you got older you didn't really you just went into sort of doing your subjects and sort of put it been put on the path that you think is correct and what's going to make you money as well that was a big thing it's like what was making money security (laughs) um and then yeah you just sort of forget about what you wanted to do and i mean you're only young of course but you forget about the excitement of that you know yeah having that oh i could do anything i could be anything um we lose all that when we're sort of coming through high school but then when we get to adulthood we've got all these obviously circumstances change and you've got bills and everything like that um but I mean, why couldn't we just refocus and re-ask ourselves, you know, what do we want to be? That's the thing. And, like, a lot of us get lost and down that path. totally do. That kind of gets taken out of us. We're never really asked to go back to what we truly feel inside and yeah, what, what we truly feels want to be. right it's yeah. like what's the logical thing and what for will you? make money what that's will make money thing. what would be safety yeah and one thing i'll say the reason why I, i'm and I, i'd love to find out about you as well um regan why you're so passionate about you know entrepreneurship entrepreneurship but one of the reasons i am is because i worked for like an oil and gas for uh, oil and gas company for nine years in the city. I was in London that they moved over to, and they moved me over to Australia. And although it gave me a great opportunity because I'm here in Australia and 
um, now a citizen, etc. The one thing I would say is that everyone stayed there. You had people there for years, absolute years, whether mm. it was like, whether it's five years or 26 years or whatever, um, because of the safety. Mm. And then, you know, they felt that they were secure, they were safety. It's like, you know, they had a good job. Yeah. And I had to make lots and lots, hundreds of redundancies over the last two, three years. We're yeah. going back last year mm-hmm. and those few years. And all those safe jobs did disappear. Yeah, they yeah. weren't they weren't safe anymore. No, so, you yeah. know. So like we we think that things are safe. So that's when I say if you're going to lose your job and you're not going to have that safety. Then at least going to do do it with something that you're really really passionate about. Yeah, and that you really love because it's such a shame. And again, it goes back to from a young age. Mm-hmm. We we ask what you want to be when you grow old, and they yeah. oh that's sweet, you know. Yeah. And then it's that's pretty much it. Yeah, and they go and then that's it. They don't really do anything else with you in high school or they don't, they don't really need to do tune in. No, do they? They don't really get you to set, you know, one to five to ten year goals. And that's one thing that I think we lose track of is we don't look at how far we've come and how far we have to go. We just look at the now. Right like now. a lot of us look at, um, especially when in our own businesses and stuff, we look at, oh, we want everything to happen now. Going back to the start, we want everything to happen now. But it's like, okay, if I set up and I take my time getting there, this could be something that will keep going and if I build it properly will last me from now until you know I retire or will last me in the long term as opposed to getting a quick buck now you know yeah so it's another thing versus with entrepreneurship is good because it forces you to take your time as well Mm. because you don't have all your eggs in one basket you're like crap okay I've got not crap but okay I've got a safety net so I can focus on this if that doesn't work or if um, I go down a certain path and that ends up you know falling on its head or whatever that's cool I've got still my side my job my main job and then you can take a different strategy you know because Mm. it's all about trial and error I believe when you're starting out a business and you don't know how something's going to go or you could try a new concept or a new product and it could you put all your you know, effort into it and it could just fall flat in its face and then you're yeah. left with nothing, you know. But in saying that as well, it could take off and then that way you could say goodbye to your, you know, your job and the nine to five and focus on that. So That's such a good point. I loved what you said about trial and error. Yeah. Because, like, I, I really think that we get so um, caught up in shit that by Jared. <laughs> um, we get so caught up in... Oh God, I just don't know what to do. I know, but I know that I don't like this, and I don't want to be in this job. Well, mm. Actually, that's awesome. You're one step further. You've experienced something yep. that you know you really don't like. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know you don't want to do that. So that's like a, you've tried and errored, and you can cross that off and you go. Okay. Well, this isn't an area that I want to do. But were the aspects that I mm-hmm. quite enjoyed, and then just. Co- constantly trialing and er erroring yeah that's a word erroring trialing trialing and error yeah and also we get caught up you know there'd be some people that just know okay i want to be a graphic designer for example Mm -hmm. and they are so excited about that and there's nothing else you know that i'm going for that and there'll be other people that have all these different uh, passions yeah that they're trying to discover Yeah. yeah and that's also fine because like i said nothing's particularly safe it's good to have your hands in different like, yeah exactly areas. especially when you're young as well even older like you can still dabble in different areas like there's no really limit on it um you might get to i mean fiona is a great example she used to work for amazon financial and she decided to give up her nine to five and chase her dream of starting um natural raw yeah like that's that's awesome and then you've got people that are just coming out of uni and they want to start their own businesses and they've got all this ambition Mm. so there's all different times that you can you know you can do things it's just the proper way of doing it yeah Um, and the smart way as well because a lot of people do jump head first and they that's because they want it now instead of going okay i'm going to think of a plan longer long term yeah and say you know what i will go and get a job in the same field that i'm looking maybe to do business in it might be a bit difficult if you've got a niche business but do something like even waitressing where you can just go and wait on for yeah. during the day and then at night work in your own business and you don't have to think about work, you know? You don't have to come home and go, oh, I've got to do this tomorrow, that tomorrow. Yeah. It can just be, you know, a job that you leave and you leave it at work and then you come home, you can focus on your passion. Yeah. Music, whatever it is, you know? So, um, yeah, I think, like, you can do it at any point in your life as well. You it can. Have to be... And I think what, what the thing that holds us back so much is pride. Yeah. I remember a friend of mine saying... 
God, I, they'd only been out of uni for two years or three years, and they said, I really hate my job. I know that I hate my job. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, why don't you look and get in something else? I was like, they were like, but I'll have to start right at the beginning again, and I, I don't want to go with that amount of money. Like, my friends are earning a decent amount of money. I have to stop myself from going to certain holidays. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, look, if that's, if that's what makes you more happy, having that money. But in mm. the long term, it doesn't. So now five years t- ten years even later mm. that person is in exactly the same place yeah so they're really unhappy in their job and now they're thinking okay i should have maybe taken that, that one step. opportunity yeah. why did i not do it right there and then when i yeah. felt it because now i'm this far ahead mm-hmm. and I'm in exactly the same situation and you're just not happy yeah. and and that pride it's going to have to come down soon or they're going to live a life where they're not particularly happy or fulfilled yeah, exactly and that's yeah. going to come up in loads of different areas of their, mm-hmm. their life as well that really does affect you if you're not feeling like you're fulfilled or, or going towards the purpose or something yeah definitely yeah totally agree um one thing I was going to talk about that I wrote down so we we're talking about goals quite a bit in this and we're talking about mm. long-term goals and I don't know if you anyone's heard of Danielle Laporte she is um, the author of the desire map um, so really they're goals with soul so she talks about how it's important to obviously have goals and to write those goals down because writing a goal down can be extremely effective but really making sure that you're totally and utterly aligned with those goals Mm -hmm. so not just okay i want to earn a million dollars that's fine you could yeah yeah (laughs) i quite like to earn a million dollars too but having a think about is that your truth Mm -hmm. because and will you be happy doing that i mean i know people that not personally but i've you know seen in a different in a lot of different um books and and youtube and stuff like that um, for example, Gary V, he makes a good statement where he says he knows people that are earning $45 million a year and are unhappy, and he knows people that are earning $45,000 a year, yeah. and they're the happiest in life because they can see their kids, they can go home, they go um, on you know holidays, and it might not be a holiday they can take every month or whatever, but you know they go on maybe six-month holidays, year holidays, but it means more, you know? Yeah. So they're a lot happier. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, you know, you could earn a million dollars and be miserable as buggery. We can earn <laughs> yeah. 100000 and be, you know, quite happy. Yeah. So. And it's generally, if you're not really aligned, you don't know why you want that one yeah, million. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like, okay, well, I have a goal. So say your goal is one million. I want to earn one million dollars by next year. Mm-hmm. I don't know, just putting it out there. Then, okay, why? So is it because everyone else is? And I just want to buy lots of nice handbags. Mm -hmm. Okay, that might be (laughs) feel really good for your soul, but I'm sure there's a deeper, a deeper level to go down. So, say for example, um, if I were to earn a million dollars, well, then I know that that could potentially make me very happy. And the reason being that might be one of my goals is because it allows me the freedom to travel, Mm -hmm. allows me the freedom to give back to my family and friends. Um, allows me the freedom to live in different countries and particularly maybe own a home or be able to rent in different countries and yeah. work from there because that's something really important because I have family in Greece in England mm-hmm. and then I have friends and I'm you know I love Perth yeah. so that's why deep in my soul that's one million want- or a certain amount of money is yeah, really, really important, really important, yeah. important to me. So it would mean kind of really get into the point when you write something down stop and have a think how how heart centered like how tuned in is it with you with who you are really deep down yeah yeah so and also reassess it too every totally that's what people forget to do they'll set these goals and never look at them they'll set say a year right every everybody's guilty of doing this is come say end of 2016 start of 2017 oh okay let's have a look at our goals and what you know what happened yeah. and then you get down because you're like oh i didn't hear that i didn't hear that i didn't hear that but you don't look at the reason why and it could be because your whole alignment has changed you know you could have fallen pregnant which means that everything changes you could have got engaged which means everything changes priorities priorities change, change and yeah. therefore your goals will change now you know for example if you fall pregnant now your goal isn't to go and start a multi-million dollar company it could still be it could be it yeah. could be it could but be. your immediate goal might be okay i've got a baby coming 
you know so how am I going to be able to you know set up myself so I can take especially for the women take the leave that I need to set everything up for the baby that's coming and now it's not okay I'm gonna I've got a, a meeting or I've got to go and set this or I've got to go and set that for that business you know there's a different purpose yeah it might so, not be a, a big priority a big that priority. goal that you thought was so important yeah you just may your perspective may change yeah, it changes it yeah. may not but reviewing it would definitely yeah help. so I mean a good way to do it is um, and I need to do this myself, I don't know about you, but I do need to do this a lot more, is just having a look maybe every three months or every quarter and just going, cool. So I've set myself maybe every three to four months small goals that don't have to be like a list or, you know, tens of thousands of yeah. goals, just small little goals. And it could be just little achievements. Have a look and go, cool, I didn't hit that, so why didn't I hit that? Okay, what's not aligning? What's changed? Reassessed, you know, rejig. And then come at the end of the year, you'll have a look through all your goals and you'll hit more, which means in the following year, you might be more motivated, you know? Yeah. Instead of going, oh, I didn't hit that, I didn't hit that. Exactly. So. And that's that's when, um, yeah, I I remember that when I looked at goals at first, it was quite in a, I learned goal setting in in quite a masculine environment, which Mm. was, um, which nothing wrong with that, but it was very kind of um, head kind of logical thinking Mm -hmm. you know driven let's achieve this Mm -hmm. okay again nothing wrong with that but that wasn't in line with with me with me deep down if I really listened to myself so now that I'm setting more soul centered goals Mm -hmm. I'm definitely finding that I am more likely to achieve those I am because I'm more excited about them I feel more excitement around them but one thing I did want to go as well is talking about how we're talking about long-term goals is from going backwards. So if you're looking at your goals, what I'd really recommend is writing 10 years, five years, one year, and 30 days. If 10 years just sounds too way out there for you, okay, well, bring that back a bit. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Just do something that feels right for you. But what we're saying is so many times we look at right now and we don't look at the future. So start really having a think from 10 years and then you can work your way back and kind of really set goals that are going to get you to that 10 year yeah. goals mm-hmm. and you know strategies within that. So you start off with that 90 days and you can then check in and, and see whether, okay, that 10 year goal is likely to happen because here I am up two years or five years yeah. and I'm, I'm kind of on track. So mm-hmm. you get a feel. And again, you know, when you do those goals, you've got 10 years, five years, one year and um, 90 days. Anything change, you can always go back and review it. Yeah, but writing those it. goals down is so so yeah. powerful. And a good way to do it is having a vision board too. And we're yeah. not going to delve into that yeah. today. We'll do that in another session. But oh, I love vision boards. Vision boards are great because <laughs> it's there. It's in your face. I've got one in love my it. office. Um, and it doesn't have to be business orientated as well. This isn't just all about business. Mm. This is life. Like if you've got a goal of losing weight, you can apply this. If you've got a goal of starting a business, you can apply this. Starting a family, getting married, like traveling somewhere maybe you've got a goal that you want to hit maybe 10 countries in the next 10 years that can be a goal you yeah know? so it can apply to every aspect within mm. your life um and people really devalue what it is to you know to have goals and stuff like that they don't really look at that because you're not taught and you're not given that opportunity in the workplace much as well i mean yes. i'm not speaking for all workplaces but um here we're really fortunate because we get to have trainings every thursday and that covers different aspects of the business and different areas and the people that work here have different expertise so Mm -hmm. Hales did a goal session um with us and it was an intensive one and we really delved into who we were and you know what Mm. we actually want and a lot of people don't get that but you know if you do it yourself you don't need to be told to do it just set aside a Sunday, have a glass of wine (laughs) light a candle (laughs) why a glass have a cup of tea (laughs) a cup of tea if you're not a wine drinker (laughs) have a bottle of wine (laughs) you know (laughs) Um, and yeah, and just set some, you know, set some goals and have a look at the long term and where you want to be and get excited again. Mm. I mean, we've got so much opportunity here in Australia and I don't know, I just feel like we need to take it, take it more, you know, yeah. grasp it a little bit more. And, totally. Yeah. And what you were saying, Megan, about like, it doesn't just have to be business. You're so right. It doesn't. It no. can be personal. And you can do it again because it's all about tuning into what feels right for you. I can give you a system, anyone can give you a system and say mm. this, but mould it to what feels right, yeah. because what feels right is going to what's going to motivate you, mm-hmm. you know, in the future to actually do those things or achieve yeah. those results. 
So like what I did, for example, is I did a business 10, um, you know, that back was 10, five years, etc. And then I did a personal one. And then I haven't done my vision board yet, but I really want to do a vision board because it's pretty and I just like it. Yeah. Even though it's still powerful, but I yeah. love for me it's more pretty. aesthetically <laughs> pleasing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, rather than just a bunch of words on the wall. Yeah. Like, I what like did I it. say? <laughs> oh yeah, okay, I reach that one. Yeah. <laughs> and and you could <laughs> even have a board that's business and one that's personal. But I think yeah. my board I'm gonna mix it all together mm-hmm. because a lot of my business goals or uh, yeah, business goals really relate and reflect to personal. Yeah, personal yeah. life. It's kind of a reflection of both of them mm-hmm. together. So, have you ever written any goals for your business or something that you want to do or get into? Or yeah, I mean, I've got a vision board. I haven't done what Hale said to do, which is naughty of me. I should really go and delve and oh, do the fine. thirty day, five year, ten year plan. Um, but I mean, I set goals as little as just launching Creacon. That yeah. was a massive goal for me last year, and I just launched it. I thought, you know what, what the hell, just get it out there, get it. it's not perfect, but so what, something's out there and it's, you know, now I've, I've got more passion and more motivation to make it work as well, because it's there, it's out, it's in the open, everybody can see it, so I don't know, just hold you more accountable. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just small goals, I like travelling, um, next year we're going to America hopefully, so it's a travel goal, um, personal goal, um, mm-hmm. yeah, just, just all different, you know, different goals and with business orientated um, side of things, not delving into the personal side, but more business orientated. I mean, I said to that I wanted to get CreateCon um, at least into the place where I know what it wants, what it needs to be mm-hmm. um, in terms of service-wise. Because yeah. when I launched, I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to focus on. But now I've really narrowed that down, and I know it's going to be branding and design focused. And I'm going to focus primarily on logos, building people's brands, and websites. Where before it was like. I could do anything, you know? Yeah. Do I go down another path wow. or, you know, do I deal with maybe being a brand manager and managing people's brands and all these things? But now the goal was to find what I wanted to do and I found it. So how, so, how did you get clear about that, do you think? Just by doing. Like, I I did research, obviously. I looked into a lot of different yeah. sides and I had to look at different, in, like, sides of branding and paths that you could go down because it's such a big and open subject, really, yeah, that you could really yeah, choose huge. anything. Yeah. Um, and marketing as well was the same thing. It's so broad and so open. Um, but, yeah, just by doing and really putting myself in, into that situation where I had to do the work, you know? Yeah. Like, do I really want to enjoy this? And I would catch myself saying up to 1, 2 a.m., finishing people's branding packages off and designing things. And I was like, I really love this. And yeah, I never would get sick it. of it. I'd never be like, oh, I've got to go home and do this. And I still don't. So, I mean, that could change in the ne- next 10 years. <laughs> Maybe I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that anymore. Like, <laughs> But, but again, it's reassessing. Yeah. Exactly, and things so, change. I things think change. We get so like um, I can't think of the right word, but so narrow-minded in the fact that we have to. Hi, Sharmini. Hi, Jodes. Sorry. Oh, Thanks for watching. <laughs> um, so I think we get so yeah so into that idea where it has to be okay. I have to find exactly what I want to do right mm-hmm. now, and that's going to be that's what I it. do for the rest of my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When in fact, actually. This is what life's all about, like mm-hmm. t- trial and error and testing, and things change. You go into different avenues and streams and stuff yeah. like that. Exactly. So, um, the uh, I was just saying to Regan before we started um, chatting on here is that I did do a ten-year plan, mm-hmm. okay, but even within, and that was in January, and it's now March, and everything's changed <laughs> so i need to go back and review that now because this happens completely. frequently guys <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, i always tell me all about it <laughs> no it's good it's good so, yeah, some people if you're like me i'm like a bit of an all or nothing Just person like, yeah, the flow, <laughs> flying around <laughs> where are you at today hales <laughs> yeah so my yeah where i am may yeah. change quite a lot yeah and that's and that's also fine like you know that's absolutely fine so for me it's kind of okay the direction that i thought i was going in well I've done a few and trial and errored a few things and mm-hmm. some of those bits worked and some of them don't and now I'm kind of ve- well I feel very clear about where I do want to go yeah. in 10 years so I need to go and sit down and redo that personal life that side hasn't changed at all so that's really where I want to be but for the business I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to tweak a few bits so I'm not mm-hmm. going to get rid of rid of everything mm-hmm. and Another thing that I, I myself have, I have a coach that I check in with every two weeks. So um, she's a uh, entre- she 
she's a business coach for entrepreneurs and creatives mm-hmm. um, for women specifically. And so I check in with her every two weeks and she kind of gives me little strategies and actions to complete that will also kind of stretch me every yeah. couple of weeks. And, and put you back, me, back on the path as well, I guess. Yeah, yeah. put me back yeah. on the path of like, okay, what's your... So we have what's called like a series. So mm-hmm. it's like a three-month block um, where we meet every two weeks. Um, but that three that three-month block is kind of, okay, at the beginning, where, what do you want to achieve mm-hmm. at the end of these three months? And then every meeting that we have is making those action steps to make sure that I achieve that that. by those three months. And Mm -hmm. making sure that it's measurable, but also making sure that it's... um, like it's pushing you as well yeah exactly. you know, so a mixture of the both yeah. so that's kind of how I keep on on my even though I'm coaching like yeah and I'm a coach a training coach yeah. I will I think always have a coach myself because it keeps me accountable and it's something it's that, important yeah exactly and if that's what you need obviously something that I value yeah, yeah exactly and it's not you know not everyone would want that but something it's like they look at where where you are now where you want to be and they help you to get that Mm -hmm. if you're happy and and you're very accountable anyway that you can do that yourself then absolutely amazing it's the people that just want that someone to push them up the butt yeah exactly so (laughs) yeah like me i don't have a coach but i keep myself accountable or i team up with people in the same industry and we yeah we get together and chat about different things and what are you doing with your business and it sort of gives you that that motivation so it is actually and that's a good point because that's another aspect if you're Mm. surrounded by people that are in the same industry yeah and you're bouncing ideas off each other Mm -hmm. and you're chatting about different things it that keeps you motivated and accountable as well Mm -hmm. so that may be a different form of you kind of having that same that same thing that same thing yeah exactly yeah yeah, cool. All right. So I think that is everything. That's pretty much it, yeah. yeah. We're just sort of winging it, going with the yeah. flow. Um, I, hope, I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully you got something out of it. Um, if you've got any questions, just chuck them in the comments and we'll yes. have a look at the comments for the next, say, half an hour or so. And, um, yeah, if if we can answer them, we'll try and answer them. Yes. If you want any information on um, what Haley's doing coach-wise mm-hmm. as well, um, if you want a coach, if you're looking for a coach, can oh, yeah. Haley up and see, <laughs> yeah, see what she recommends because she's doing all different. You're doing a coaching course at the moment, yeah. which is all yeah. different areas, correct? Mm, yeah. yeah. So that would be really handy, I reckon. Yes, it is very interesting. Um, anything branding design wise? Holla. You know who <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so that's it. Yeah, Thank that's much. it. Thank Have you good day, very guys. much, everyone, for listening. And go and set some goals. Yes, <laughs> set some goals. That's what we And also, Get the candle. It oh, smells yeah. delicious. Oh, God, it smells lovely. And get a bottle of wine. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> See you guys. Have a good day. See ya. Bye. Oh.